North Sea is a very shallow sea, which is very good for marine life. It's also a cold water sea, which means there's lots of nutrients there. These factors combined mean that we get things called kelp forests on rocky shores. These are very, very thick seaweed and they're very good for very small fish, uh, like uh, juvenile fish species. There's up to 220,000 fish can live in just one hectare of kelp forests. So undisturbed, these forests can be very, very rich for wildlife and can attract many whales and dolphins into the area for them. I have an education role on this ship. I talk to passengers about whales and dolphins. I give presentations and I also show people whales and dolphins from the view we have here. The main animals that we see are the harbour porpoises, this animal here. Yeah. We see that on both sides of the trip, so on the Newcastle side and on the Amsterdam side. Yeah. But we see them in low numbers, maybe one or two individuals at a time. Yeah. Maybe once every three, four days. Then we have the white beaked dolphin. We see these only on the Newcastle side. Now this year, we haven't seen so many this far south. They're a cold water loving species. And what we think is that the water temperature from the ship is a little bit too warm. They're getting record numbers a little bit further north, just north of Newcastle. So unfortunately for the ship, that's not so good for us for sightings this year. We also get bottlenose dolphins, but in low numbers. So we see them maybe once every two months or so. Also we have the minke whale which we see maybe once a month at the moment but as the season wears on in September and October we see many more minke whale coming down from Scotland because they follow herring shoals so we're expecting our sightings to increase at that time. So we can use these, we actually collect the data and we can see whether the populations are changing. And we're trying to work with fisheries and with shipping companies to see if they can work around the whales and dolphins that we have. For example, the harbour porpoises didn't occur at all in the Southern North Sea 10 years ago. So their numbers are now increasing in the Southern North Sea. So we're trying to work out exactly why this is happening. Are their populations changing from the north and coming further south, or are they increasing in number? So over the next few years, these are the sorts of research that we're trying to uh, work on and to see whether it's connected with fisheries or not. So in the Northern North Sea, there are many more mackerel and herring. So we get more types of whale and dolphin living more often in the north. So we get, for example, uh, orca or killer whale, which live in the Northern North Sea a lot more than in the Southern North Sea, because there are many, many more mackerel up there. Uh, in the Southern North Sea, we get harbour porpoises more often, um, but they've only been here in the last 10 years or so. Um, they've moved into this area because there's more fish coming in here now. With uh, orca or killer whale, the main thing is that they do not have the food that they need on the Dutch coast. They prefer to eat mackerel, and the mackerel are found in large numbers in the northern North Sea. The largest problem in all of the seas is the amount of rubbish, particularly plastic. Plastic is a huge problem in all of the world's oceans, but in the North Sea, we still have a very big problem. I picked up a huge bag of rubbish off Iremouden Beach yeah. and it took me five minutes to fill a bin bag just with plastic. Yeah. So it really is a key problem. Why? If you imagine a large whale, they can take in tons of water into their mouth. Once they squeeze that water out of their mouth, anything that is left behind, they swallow down and they get it in their stomach and then they can die of starvation because their stomach is full of plastic. So plastic really is the biggest issue that we have to try and tackle. And it's, it's changing the way we use plastics. You know, a lot of people, they have plastic bags, plastic bottles, they use them once and then just throw them away. But if we can use things like uh, other material, which are other than plastic to go with our shopping, 
or um, a metal container for water and things like that, things that we can reuse time and time again, then we have fewer plastics in the world and then there's less that gets washed into the oceans.